appointed to defend Tom Robinson. Now that he's been charged, that's what I intend to do. You taking his turn? Excuse me, Mr. Ewell. Atticus Jim says his watch is going to go on pan someday. That's right. What are you going to give me? There's a pearl necklace. There's a ring that belonged to your mother. You want to tell us what really happened? I got something to say. And if you ain't gonna do nothing about it, then you're just a bunch of lousy, yellow, stinking coward. To Kill a Mockingbird, a screen classic for all time. New York Daily News today reports that jurors are saying there were all sorts of shenanigans going on in the jury room at the Michael Jackson case. That a juror wanted to convict Jackson, smuggled in a medical dictionary to prove Jackson fits the definition of a pedophile. She was later, she says, intimidated into changing her vote to not guilty. Same juror we told you about yesterday, Eleanor Cook, who's reportedly writing a tell-all book titled Guilty as Sin, Free as a Bird. The news also reports another allegation that, quote, another juror sneaked a forbidden video of court TV broadcasts featuring the prosecution-friendly Diane Diamond and Nancy Grace into the jury room, but a faulty VCR prevented a sneak peek. And that a, quote, gang of three female jurors were such rabid Jackson fans that they cooed, not my Michael, when the panel discussed the felony charges against the pop idol. Yikes. A.C. Brown, MSNBC analyst, author of Michael Jackson, The Man Behind the Mask, and a name who keeps popping up with all these books. Stacy, you, are you writing any of these books, first of all? No, I'm not. All right. But you've been talking to these jurors. You actually talked to these jurors about writing a book. That's correct. All right. And I was approached. You were approached. All right. And so they are saying the things that the Daily News reports, are they not? Well, they, they are saying a lot more than just that. What um, else are they saying? Well, let's just clear up with the medical book. She didn't actually bring it into the deliberation room. The, the jurors were meeting. They rendezvoused at uh, Juvenile Hall in Santa Maria, and she brought it there. And as they were getting into the vans, they ordered her to put it back in her car. But she wanted them to understand, Ellie Cook this is, mm -hmm. that this fits Michael to a T. So she wanted them to know Michael Jackson's guilty as a pedophile and what? And then she just caved? She said she was pressured. They, she was threatening. They were threatening to throw her off the jury. Oh, come on. This is the one who's been wanting to write a book since the beginning, right? Yeah, absolutely. Her granddaughter had put out feelers from the very, since she was picked for the jury. What other kind of shenanigans were going on back there, do they say? Well, um, they, they mentioned the, um, as, as you had mentioned in your open about the court TV video, someone had apparently taped some court TV um, stuff and they tried to play it. Uh, apparently, the, it was a malfunction in the videotape. Mm -hmm. and well, let, me, let me give you what the juror's explanation for this. This is Paula Cocos. We talked to her today. Juror number 10. It's number 4. Uh, the bailiff brought in a TV with a VCR so we could review the sheriff's interview. When we went to put in the tape, we realized there was another tape already in the VCR. The tape was marked court TV. The people at the courthouse had left this tape in the VCR. We told the bailiff about this, and he seemed concerned about whether or not we reviewed the tape. We told him we didn't watch it. We didn't find out until later what was on the tape. Yeah. According to Ellie, though, it, someone taped that show. It wasn't left there. Um, and there was a problem. Now, I know that someone else mentioned that there was a problem as well with a VCR, but if, if you remember, the disc, well, the interview with the sheriff and the young boy was on a disc and not a VCR. 
And th this is number five. Uh, this is, again, Daily News. The cook uh, admits that she frequently winked at Jackson's mother, um, Catherine and Court, in exchange wardrobe tips with the entertainer's mom, which resulted in them wearing the same colors on El certain days. <laughs> Ellie Cook talks about that, yeah. She mentioned that she would wink. They would wink and nod at each other. But I don't understand. So on the one hand, this, this juror is saying, oh, I was convinced he was guilty. You know, and they're saying, oh, she was trying to bring in a medical tax. And on the other hand, she's sitting there winking at Catherine Jackson, talking about what saying clothes they're going to wear. going to be okay. See? And that's why you didn't believe this story. That's why I don't, yeah. That's why I, you wouldn't write the book. I'm not writing it, because I, I just think that there's a lot of issues with this. If, if you felt that he, this guy was guilty, you felt he was a pedophile, he's, he lives in your community, he's a very powerful member of your community, why let him free then? Do you just not believe these jurors? Is that the problem? I just don't believe them. Why? I mean, you just, you just, it's they're just, making this up for money? Well, you know, I think in both their cases, they feel now, in, in retrospect, maybe we made a mistake. And see, I can live with that if that's what they are saying. But they're not saying that. They're saying that they believe all along he was guilty. And I'm having a hard time with that. All right. Stacey, uh, stick around for a minute. Joining me now, NBC News legal analyst, former prosecutor Susan Feinland, and attorney and celebrity justice executive producer Harvey Levin, criminal defense attorney Daniel Horowitz. Harv, what do you make of it? Look, you followed this closely. What do you make of all this? Well, I think Eleanor Cook is a wacko, Dan, and I think if any of these allegations are true, these jurors need to be prosecuted. I mean, this is jury tampering from within the jury if these allegations are true. And if there is ever to be a fair celebrity trial again, especially in California, somebody needs to say, look, we are drawing the line. You're not going to get books at the end of the rainbow and do things inappropriate. If it pans out, it's yeah. true. I think Tom Snedden himself should prosecute without <laughs> respect to whether it would have been pro or anti Michael Jackson. So Susan, let's assume for a minute it's true. Again, you're the prosecutor and you're sitting there going, are you kidding me? There were two or three jurors who wanted to convict and they and they caved because they were pressured or whatever. You can't do anything, can you? Nothing. It, game over. You can't take an appeal from an acquittal. The problem that I have with this is, as members of the media, we had an awfully difficult time with access to this trial. If this is going to set a precedent to shut media out because these highly publicized celebrity trials yield these faulty verdicts, she's doing far, far more harm than yeah, she ever understands. Forget understand. about the media stuff. I mean, the bottom line is the prosecutors can't do anything about this, right? I mean, if the jurors were tampering with evidence, if they were playing with evidence, etc. back there. The prosecutors have to just suck it up and be depressed. There's no remedy. They have to eat it. It's over. Daniel doesn't, I mean, I don't know, Stacy doesn't really believe them, but what do you think? Well, Dan, I believe them. You know, jurors are people. We expect them to be perfect little robots doing what the judge says, and they don't. They're going to watch television. I'm sure they all watch your show, and they watch Susan try to convict Michael Jackson, but then I hope they listen to me and to reason. But the bottom line is, they reached a fair and just verdict. You have to trust people, and Melville's attempt to control and hyper-control this case just backfired. It made the jurors feel isolated, and now they're all quiet. They won't talk to us about see, what here, really went here, on. Here's my problem. It's this woman saying she was forced and bullied, right? Right? into reaching the verdict that she did. And there she is saying, I didn't like the way that this woman snapped at me, talking about the accuser's mother, etc. You know, Dan, I don't even talk to juries afterwards unless I win, because <laughs> you're always going to hear things like that. People in a jury room are in a bar room brawl. It's not supposed to be pretty. And when it's over, there's always second thoughts and regrets. You know, but it's the system and it works. Harvey, Dan, your point you know is what? That hey, can, hey, if, if I may say, you know, a bar room brawl is one thing. They were acting like outlaws if these, if these allegations are true. Right. And, you know, I agree, Susan, that the prosecutors can't do anything to Michael Jackson, but they certainly can do something to the jurors. And yeah. I think it is more important right now to say, I, I'm telling you, Dan, you and I have covered a lot of trials in this city and we've seen a lot of weird things happen since OJ Simpson with books and everything else if jurors realize that there's that there's a back end if you will which is a Hollywood term to these trials and if they get caught so what they get caught but they can still publish a book if they believe that let me ask everything you, is going to change in this Harv, city. here's the thing that I'm gonna say and this is why Stacy made the right call on this all right Stacy may say he didn't believe him whatever I don't think that many people are gonna buy this book that's, is oh, that the reason, Stacey? Well, is that the real reason you no, didn't want to write the that, book, Stacey? No, you didn't think you were going to make any money? Come on. 
That's the real reason, isn't it? No. The, the real reason is, Dan, believe it or not, I have a conscience. Right. I, I wrote Man Behind the Mask with Bob Jones because I believed in Bob Jones, and I still believe in the material. I don't believe in this material. Bob, I, Harvey, do you agree with me that the book's not really going to sell much? Absolutely, for two reasons. Number one, I think it would have been a better book if you would have been found guilty. Yeah. And secondly, I think the credibility of the authors um, mean a whole lot. And I think that, you know, I just think everything is so off kilter, people aren't going to be particularly interested. Yeah. So what would cause two jurors to change their convictions in the Michael Jackson case and in their words, let a pedophile go free? Hear now the pressure you never saw behind closed doors. <laughs> Was the jury one big happy family when you went into the deliberation room? I, I think prior to deliberations, uh, I think that there was some com camaraderie. It wasn't really until we got into the deliberation room and found out what was in people's minds that we realized that we're not all in the same key here. So it really surprised me when everybody seemed to turn and get so mean. You go back into the jury room start deliberating. After a few hours, you have sort of an unofficial vote. What were the results? About two-thirds of the jury were uh, considering Michael Jackson as not guilty at that time. And where were you? I was on the guilty side. No, you were the first one to say guilty. guilty. Yes, ma'am. She I, said it in a big way. I said Right away. <laughs> I said it in a big way, and they came after me with a vengeance. I really got attacked. How so? I didn't understand. I didn't know. I was too old. And there was a third juror, Katerina Carls, a 39-year-old county government worker who tells us that she too initially believed Jackson was guilty. Very bright. She lady. was very bright. She had taken a lot of notes. She knew exactly what was going on. And it amazed me when one of the other jurors challenged this particular juror that that she may not really know too much about the American justice system because she had only been a citizen for two years. How tough did it get for the two of you and this other juror? There you are, three of you holding out, and the other nine are livid. You, you, you wind up thinking, okay, if I stay with my convictions, that I believe that Michael Jackson is a child molester and that he did, did in fact, molest this accuser, then what's the next thing that could happen? These people voted not guilty 14 times, not just 10. Now almost two months after being discharged from their responsibilities as jurors, they're now changing their tune. I think it's laughable.